and welcome to Chapter 2 Homework. Woo woo. So Chapter 2, again, is more about learning about credits and debits and bringing in journal entries. So first, we always have to analyze and then we make the journal entry. So this one, as you can see, has 10 parts. It also gives us the transaction, but we can also click here if we want to see them all. Look at all those wonderful transactions. But we got them right there, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Since from my previous video, I did not know if y'all can see those windows. Apparently y'all can. And then here's our requirements. That just tells us which accounts to use. But I have dropped down. So, again, let's start with May 1st. The business received cash of 86000 and issued common stock to Jason Webb. So, our goal is always to put debit first, then credits. So, the first thing that we have to understand is which accounts are affected. First, it's cash. Okay, cash is received, so we know our bank account is growing. Cash is an asset, and assets increase by debit. So there's our debit account. You always have to know this. Is use that dealer acronym. That thing's going to help you a lot. Now let's see if we can find another account. Common stock. And we know common stock is also going to increase because that's going to show the basically what the owner owns of the company, their share of the business. And remember, since it's an equity, equity increases by credit. Also, again, if I know there's only two accounts, I already know every debit has to have a credit. And I think it says do the explanation right here. And of course, it's issued common stock in exchange for cash. Yay. Check answer. All done. Moves to the next transaction. Purchase office supplies on account. First off, we're gaining an asset. We know an asset's increasing in supplies. So again, Assets increase by debit, so office supplies, 400. How did we get it? Something that has to be credited. Well, we see on account again. And again, once you see on account, that means it's either accounts receivable or accounts payable. Since we paid for these supplies we purchased, we're going to deal with accounts payable. Again, if it shows that we're going to owe someone, it's going to be the payable. And liabilities do indeed increase by credit, so we're okay. So let's find, there's our explanation. Check. Good to go. So again, knocked out two. And look, eight parts remaining. Woo-woo. Paid 50000 cash for building and land. The building had a fair market value of 42000 Prepare a compound entry. Okay, so compound entries on this. We have two assets. So we received a building and land. So how do we receive those? By paying cash. And always when you do these journal entries, if it has cash, figure out if it's increasing or decreasing. Cash is decreasing, it's a credit. Increasing, it's a debit. So this, we paid 50000 for both of these. We know the building is at least worth 42000 So that means land should be 8000 to balance it out. And there we go. So, we separated them because, again, buildings are going to be depreciable. They wear down. 
Land does not. That's why we do have to separate those out because they're different types of fixed assets. Check. Good job. Move on. Perform services for customers and received cash. Okay. So when we perform a service, that is revenue. Okay. Again, we completed it. But we know revenue in itself increases by credit. So we can't put that first. But we see cash. So again, we received cash. So that means cash should be going up by 2500 And then, of course, our revenue, 2500 And easy as apple pie. Whoop, we did not perform services on account. Perform services and receive cash. All right, May 9th, paid 150 on accounts payable. So we paid some of our bill. So of course, accounts payable will have to go down. And liability does decrease by a debit. While our cash should also decrease by credit because we're paying a bill. So find our explanation, paid cash on account. So, so far, we are doing pretty good. Perform services for customers on account. So here, we have a on account again. We know we perform services, thus earning. So service revenue. But did we receive the money? No. So we don't have cash. So when we don't have cash, usually it's going to be accounts receivable. Again, this is saying that we expect to receive cash at a later date. Good old three grand. So let's go ahead and write that. There we go. And receive services on account again if you ever have problems with these just let me know and I'll help you all out and of course you can see the homework score right up here there's the save okay paid rent expense for the month so first off I already know I only have two accounts I only it's so small you have two accounts and here we have an expense, rent expense, which expenses are pretty much going to only increase by credits. I mean, not credits, debits right now. And then how did we pay for it? By cash. And of course, explanation, because it won't let me go for it further. Paid cash expenses. Okay, now we received 1400 for customer first services to be performed next month. Alright, so we received money. Have we performed this service yet? No. So we do know cash is going up. We received cash. But our credit is not revenue because we didn't earn it. It's going to be unearned revenue remember this is a liability this means I still owe them money in case I don't do the job I have to refund them their money so we collected cash for future service okay paid 400 for advertising in next month's IT technology magazine Ew. So, this is a prepaid because we're paying it for a month early. So, we haven't yet used up this advertising. That is an interesting one that they throw at you. So, cash 
400. And of course, let's find our prepaid paid advertising in advance. Okay. So, receive 2300 cash on account from a customer. Okay. So, 2300 cash. So, right here we know we received money again. That's always going to be a debit. And when it's on account from customer, that's their, your, our customer paying off their debt. So they no longer owe us money. We received the money that we told them we expect to receive. So, received cash on account. There we go. And then finally, our last one, incurred and paid salaries. So again, salaries expense, cash, debit, credit, and then paid cash expense. And that's it. Okay. So this one right here, prepare the journal entries that serve as the source for the five transactions, including an explanation for each one. Okay. So this one, I'm going to show at least the first one, since they look like exactly what we've done, just in a different format. First off, remember T accounts, debits on the left, credits on the right. Okay. So with this, we start with the numbers, follow your numbers. First one, we have 53,000 debit in cash. Okay. And then number one right here, common stock is a credit. So all we're doing is follow through to our transactions. And it'll say right here which one it is and provide the explanation. And that's really it that's going on in this one. So I went through all the journal entries in the first one. This one I don't I don't think I need to because it's repeats. All it really is is saying which one was my debit. So like number two, debit office supplies, credit accounts payable. So all you're doing is really copying these over and putting an explanation. Okay, not bad. Three. Three's more journal entries. Okay, there's 33 parts here. Let's see all the requirements. So, this one actually would take longer to do it looks like this one does have t accounts that have been open for each transaction post the journal entries to the t accounts so really all you're doing now once you do all the journal entries is you're going to post to the t accounts so you're going to do exactly like number two and then you're going to prepare a trial balance for carol smith designers so how many transactions are there all right, there's way too many. This video was going to go on forever. <laughs> so again, you're going to go through here. And when we look at a trial balance, always remember, header, since it won't let me get to it. So it's the header, then assets first, liabilities, equity, common stock, dividends, Revenue and expense. That's really it. I wish this this is the one thing I don't like. So let me see if it'll pop up e text in another window. So I'd rather sh I mean, find a way to show y'all. Let's 
C paste. And let it pop up the app. So page 64 it looks like on the book. Nice. Let's go find that trial balance. As it takes its time. So again, if you have a copy of the ebook, it will help. This video is going to still help you. As soon as I'm able to get to the trial balance. So again, if you got your notes, notes will help you as we move forward. There is a lot of pages to this one. Okay. Uh huh. There's our posting. Did, did we just did not do the trial balance? Oh, y'all guys are whack. Or did I totally skip it? Okay, so apparently it did not do the trial balance. Okay, well, again, if you get to it, and you just uh, I mean, get stuck, let me know, send me a question, and I'll go through it with you. Again, I just don't want to bleed through your time and go through all this, but really, if you go here, so T accounts, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to post these T accounts, and then you're going to find the balance. Okay, so balance debit side, bal I mean, find the balance on debit, find the balance on credit, subtract the two, and then you'll get your actual balance, the final one. And that's the balance you're going to put on the trial balance. Let's go see what number four has in store. Okay, this is preparing the financial statements again and calculating debt ratio. So right here, we've already went over balance income statements, balance sheets. Oh look, here we go. There's a trial balance. Some of it has it. So again, title, what we're doing, specific date, and then list them out. So if you need help, I would say jump over to problem four, fill in all the accounts, and then head back to this one when you get to trial balance. Well, we've already done balance sheets and income statements in the first chapter. So I'm not going to go over this one more time. Just watch out for the debt ratio. Remember that's, what is it, uh, total, and uh, should be like total, li uh, total liabilities divided by total assets. So, real quick, I just want to make sure I told you the right thing. I know it's on your notes. So total liabilities divided by total assets. Wow, way to go me. <laughs> but that's really it for this chapter. Okay. So nothing too major going on. As long as you're following the notes and understand how to make journal entries, you'll be perfectly fine. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know.